Lipolysis as it is used in the aesthetic space is really referring to killing of fat cells. And one way to kill fat cells is through cryolipolysis. Cryolipolysis is the non-invasive application of cooling to selectively remove fat cells without inducing any damage or injury to the skin or the surrounding tissues. The adipocyte is a unique cell in that it, uh, although is somewhat spherical, the functional and living portions of the fat cell have been pushed out into the membrane of the cell, leaving room to store the triglycerides, the lipids, inside the middle. In the membrane are the organelles. Those are the, uh, the, the functional components of the cell, and, uh, the, uh, and, and those comprise a very small percentage of the overall fat cell since most of it is the triglycerides. Fat is deposited in two primary places. One is called the visceral fat, and that is the fat that's found around your organs uh, below the muscle layer. And then there's subcutaneous fat, which is found just below the surface of the skin. Subcutaneous fat is the fat that cool sculpting can address. Because it is more superficial, we can address it with non-invasive cooling. And that also is the fat that creates these bumps and bulges that we, can, uh, that we can address to make people look better. As we gain weight, our fat cells enlarge as more triglycerides are being stored in those same adipocytes, the fat cells. And as we lose weight, those fat cells shrink. And this can happen uh, repeatedly and over long periods of time. Typically, in people who are of normal body weight, our fat cell number stays pretty well constant and is set early in adolescence. Our fat cells are replaced about 10% per year. So it's a relatively slow process. So as the fat cells are removed, they don't come back anytime real soon. Normally, your fat is metabolized by the fat cells converting those triglycerides into free fatty acids and glycerol. Those constituents then go into the blood, go into muscles, and then they can be um, used for energy. The devices that are on the market for heating to kill fat kill the fat typically through immediate necrosis. They destroy the fat cells uh, on, uh, upon heating. After these cells are destroyed uh, with this necrotic injury, the body responds typically with a wound healing response. And that involves uh, influx of cells that create new collagen, uh, sometimes scar formation. And also, because the cells are immediately destroyed, the lipids have the opportunity to uh, leach out into the subcutaneous space. This is in contrast to what happens after a cool sculpting procedure. Because cool sculpting induces an apoptotic cell death, the body responds not with a wound healing response, but only with a clearing process called phagocytosis. During the cooling process, the lipids within the fat cells crystallize. They undergo a phase transition. And then there is a very subtle injury that takes place to the living portion of the cell, the membrane, that is on a molecular level and causes the cell to initiate its own programmed cell death. That programmed cell death takes place over the next two to three days in the affected cells. Cryolipolysis is based on the principle that the fat cells are naturally more susceptible to a cooling injury than the skin or the other cells in the vicinity. So that enables us to do a non-invasive cooling down of the skin and all the subcutaneous tissue together. And the only cells that are affected by this process are the fat cells themselves. It triggers an, uh, an apoptotic cascade, that is a programmed cell death which the cell then shuts itself down over the period of two to three days after the procedure. During this process, the cells exude cytokines, or these uh, signals, to the inflammatory system to come and clear out the now dead fat cells. And that process takes two to three to sometimes a few more months in order to clear out all of the fat cells that have been affected. This type of injury is unique to fat cells because of their nature having all these lipids inside them. Other cells like skin cells, vessels, and even the muscle are not affected in the same way. As early as the 1960s, scientists became aware that cold can have this effect on fat cells in a phenomenon called popsicle paniculitis. 
children who were sucking on popsicles for, uh, for a relatively long time were finding that days later they were ending up with inflammation in their fat and they would have fat atrophy. The fat would go away. Fortunately, in young children that fat uh, comes right back. That doesn't happen so readily in adults. In 2008, Dr. Dieter Munstein, who's associated with Harvard Medical School, documented the early animal research in a pig model in cryolipolysis. Those early pig studies demonstrated that with controlled cooling, the fat cells could be injured, although there was no immediate necrosis, there was apoptosis or programmed cell death that resulted in the subsequent reduction of the fat layer over two to three months after the procedure. During and following this cryolipolysis process, the skin was never damaged or ever showed any signs of the treatment. This cryolipolysis technology is what evolved and became the cool sculpting procedure that's currently being marketed by Zeltique. Well, we call this particular study a storyboard study because it tells the story of what happens following a cryolipolysis procedure. First, let me describe the pig study that we did to get this histology series. This was a 90-day study. At the end of the study, the animal was sacrificed and all the tissue was harvested for pathology. 90 days prior to that, one small area was treated on the pig's abdomen. 60 days prior to the end of the study, a second area was treated on the same animal adjacent to the first treatment. Then, 30 days prior, 14 days, and so on. This is the fat that was treated just before the animal was sacrificed. In each of these pictures, they represent the fat immediately under the dermis, and the dermis is off to the right side of the picture. As you can see from this histology, this fat looks completely normal. In fact, there's nothing about this sample that looks any different from a control sample, which is not shown. This is because the cells have been injured in a subtle way that is not visible even with this type of histology. The cells are still alive, but they have been fatally injured. The procedure initiates the apoptotic cascade, and all the fat cells in this picture will die within the next two to three days. By three days post-treatment, all these cells have died through apoptosis. The first histological evidence that is now evident as inflammatory cells begin to infiltrate the fat. The tiny blue dots you see here are the nuclei of the inflammatory cells. At seven days post, the inflammation increases. And if I blow up this section, you can see the dead fat cell and the nuclei of the inflammatory cells at higher magnification. The inflammation continues to intensify at 14 and 30 days. By 30 days, the fat cells are beginning to appear misshapen, and the cells continue to be moved out of the subcutaneous tissue through the lymph system. By 90 days, most of the fat has been removed, but you can still see a little inflammation left, indicating that the process is not yet complete and more fat will be removed. You will also note that there is a significant change in the density of the fibrous septi, the collagen, in the region immediately under the dermis. That is not because we've created scar tissue. All that collagen is the natural pre-existing collagen that was there before the treatment, but it has moved from deeper subcutaneous tissue as the adipocytes have been evacuated. So what we learned from this storyboard study is that immediately post-treatment, there is no obvious damage to the fat cells or any of the other structures. It's not until after three days that we begin to see the inflammatory process. This coincides with the end of the apoptotic cascade and the affected cells have all died. That inflammatory process that's clearing out the fat cells continues over the duration of the study for the rest of the 90 days and we see this reduction of the fat layer thickness as those dead fat cells are removed over time. We also did a storyboard study on human subjects after abdominoplasty. We tested at seven days, 14, and 90 days post-treatment. Each of those were taken from different patients over those different time points. And what we found was that the effects uh, follow pretty much what we found in the pig study storyboard as well. And the results of that study showed that we were able to induce this apoptotic injury, again, nothing immediately post-treatment, but at 
three to seven days, we begin to see inflammation. That over the 14 days up to the 90, we see the resolution of that inflammation as the fat layer thickness is reduced, the fat cells are removed. At the end of the study, at 90 days, the histology appears almost completely normal again, although the fat layer thickness is still reduced. During this study, again, we see that there is no damage to the epidermis, the dermis, nerves, vessels, nothing can be seen histologically, and that matches, of course, what we see clinically. In our clinical studies, we have noted a fat layer reduction as measured by ultrasound of about 20% of the fat layer thickness on average. Now that's true of the first procedure, and once that has resolved, or mostly resolved, at two months or so, the patient can be retreated, and we typically see then another 20% reduction. So uh, successive treatments can produce the equivalent reductions. The device that delivers the cool sculpting procedure has been cleared by FDA for cooling for various dermatologic procedures. And in the fall of 2010, the device received clearance for non-invasive fat layer reduction. The safety of the cool sculpting procedure has really been outstanding. During our clinical studies, we analyzed the side effects of 341 patients who had undergone the procedure and found that all of the side effects were minor and transient. They all resolved on their own spontaneously. Immediately after the treatment, the area will be red and a little erythematous. Typically, that will resolve within 15 minutes to several hours following the procedure. Sometimes there's a little edema, and sometimes there's also some bruising. That bruising is typically minor and resolves over a few days. In more severe cases, can last up to two weeks. Also following the procedure, some patients noticed a reduced sensation in the treatment area, and occasionally they can get some uh, pins and needles kind of feeling. All of those nerve-related symptoms all resolve on their own too. Uh, typically over the next week or two, sometimes they last up to several weeks. Cool sculpting is a non-invasive technology for reducing the fat layer thickness. It utilizes a cooling technology called cryolipolysis that induces apoptosis to target the fat cells and reduce the fat layer without damage to other tissue types. This technology has been studied extensively in both animals and in humans, and the results of those studies show that through cryolipolysis, the fat cells can be targeted, killed, and removed without any damage to the epidermis, dermis, nerves, vessels, muscle, or any of the other surrounding tissue. Cool sculpting is a low-risk, no-downtime procedure that creates observations of modest fat layer reduction in properly selected patients.